Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar. My name is McKay Allen. I'm the content manager at Log My Calls, and we're really excited you're here today um, for this uh, special webinar with Nancy Friedman, the telephone doctor. It is titled 12 New Golden Nuggets of Customer Service. We've partnered with uh, Nancy on, I think this is our third or fourth webinar in the last uh, year, year and a half or so, um, and they've been great. She provides incredible customer service knowledge and uh, we always have a good crowd and we also have a good crowd today so we're really excited that Nancy's agreed to join us. Uh, first a couple of uh, uh, house cleaning items and then we'll just jump right in. Uh, first this webinar is being recorded um, so we'll, we'll make sure you have access to that recording after the webinar is completed. Uh, and then second we encourage you to ask questions at the conclusion of Nancy's uh, presentation. So please type those questions into the little question bar on your GoToWebinar screen and uh, we will uh, then read as many of those as we can in the time allotted to Nancy so she can address those. Um, that's usually a, a really useful really useful time of the presentation is the question and answer period. Uh, first, we'll, we'll um, uh, introduce Nancy uh, more fully in a moment, but first I do want to give you a sense of how we work with Telephone Doctor at Log My Calls and what we do. So um, Log My Calls provides service insure through Telephone Doctor. And basically what this is, is it's call recording and call grading according to Telephone Doctor standards. And so uh, in addition to having Nancy train your team on customer service success, um, you can actually have, um, you can actually have uh, uh, people held accountable, if you will, for uh, the things that Nancy teaches, which is a great thing. Uh, and so that's what we encourage you to do, is to take advantage of service and short through um, telephone Doctor. It's a great program that really reinforces the principles that Nancy uh, trains on and the Telephone Doctor is famous for. Uh, so without further ado, I want to introduce Nancy. Um, Nancy Friedman, of course, is the Telephone Doctor and has uh, uh, appeared on various national broadcasts and, and radio outlets. She's been on Oprah. She's been on, um, you pr name, a, name a, an important show and she's probably been on it. Um, and so, and she's spoken, of course, at uh, corporate events and, and uh, company training events around the world. Uh, and so we're thrilled she's agreed to join us today. So, Nancy, go ahead, and thank you again for joining us. We really appreciate it. Yeah, well, you're welcome, and hello, everybody. I've got the list of who's, of who's, li uh, who's supposed to be listening, uh, and there's some wonderful, wonderful people on here. Some are obviously good, great clients, and some are new clients, and some are not clients, and some are wannabe clients. Uh, but I'm thrilled to have you all. There's, oh, my gosh, I'm just... If I call your name out, uh, whether you're a client or not, you're going to win a book. So if I go through the list and I just see a name, like let's do this like real quick. Let's go. Um, let's go to the Arkansas Oral and Facial Surgery Center in somewhere in Arkansas. So if you're listening, I think it's Terry. If you're listening, you will win a book. If you're not listening, you are a loser. All righty. Um, the service insurer is important, and I just want to tell you that you don't need to be an absolute telephone doctor client. If you want to know how your people are doing on the phone, uh, one of the things you can do is call up and ask for yourself, which we recommend highly, or you can have Log My Calls do it uh, through service insurer. And the bottom line is they will rate you, grade you, record it, and you'll be able to hear it. It's a painful experience, but most of our clients who go through service insurer, and we have hundreds and hundreds of them uh, follow the, uh, the guidelines. So it, it's something you should investigate whether you're a telephone doctor a clients or not. And of course, uh, obviously we'd love to have you be a telephone doctor. So the first picture of me there, um, I am younger and thinner in person, so keep that in mind as I talk. That's a new necklace I got there. I hope you all like it. You can reach us uh, with a tip of the day on Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. We give a customer service tip of the day Monday through Friday. Nothing's been duplicated, as is this webinar. I know last year we did one, uh, McKay, and I think somebody said, oh, I heard this before. What they heard was the format. They did not hear a repeated tip. I keep track of all the tips that we use, the nuggets that we use, and we will never repeat a tip on a webinar unless it's requested. So rest assured that the 12, 15 tips you're going to get today are brand new, fresh, and exciting for this webinar. That's number one. Number two, one of the things I like to do, because somebody says, well, how the heck did you get to be the telephone, Dr. Nancy? 
it's a pretty long story, and I don't want to take up too much of the time because we've only got 30, 40 minutes here. But I will tell you that it was a wonderful story, and if we have time at the end, I will go through it because it's something that I like my audiences to know because I just didn't wake up one morning and tell my daddy, Daddy, when I grow up, I'll be a telephone doctor. What happened is a true story, and it's the American dream. So I will share it with you at the end of the program where somebody will remember that I did it. So let's go. I have Vanna White. I hired a great, no great expense, Vanna White to come turn the slides for me. Let's go. Okay, there's service insurer. Log my calls. <coughs> Excuse me. So the first golden nugget today is four killer words. And they're simple, harmless, seemingly harmless words when you talk to a client or a customer. And the four killer words that we have deemed as useless are, hi, how are you? It's semi-useless. Number one, we normally don't care. Number two, everybody says that. Everybody says that. So telephone doctor, telephone doctor, we want to be above everybody else. There's a mass of gray average out there, and we don't want to be in it. So instead of saying to somebody, hi, how are you, we might say, nice to talk with you today. Oh, I'm glad you called. Good to hear your voice. There are 19 other ways to say, hi, how are you, without sounding like everybody else. You can do your own, or you can pick out one of mine. I, that's OK. But you will never hear a telephone doctor employee say, hi, how are you, to a new client or somebody we've never talked with. Now, that being said, <laughs> somebody's ill or somebody's had a problem, it's OK to say, hey, I hope everything's going all right. all right. But you know yourself. You walk down the hall and somebody says, hey, how are you? Fine. How are you? Nobody's listening. They're just killer words. They just, they just uh, divert the whole conversation. So our suggestion is use something else. When you get somebody on the phone, good to hear your voice. Nice to meet you by phone. I'm glad we're talking. Again, I can give you 22 other ways to say, hi, how are you, and not, not not be offensive with that. So hi, how are you is killer words. Is killer words? That doesn't sound like good English, Nancy. Where'd you go to school? OK, don't turn the page yet, because the next one's going to be have something. We have a new video out. And if you haven't seen it, I highly suggest you, you call in and get a preview of it or get our, our service skills information. It's called Killer Words of Customer Service. And hi, how are you isn't on there, because there are eight killer words that we call conversation diverters. And the first of the conversation diverters is, now, Vanna, I'll let you go to number two. Number two. The first conversation diverter is number two. Number two. Vanna, are you there to turn my Almost. Almost, Vanna. Good. Calm I had a down. Little technical glitch. I apologize. Oh, technical we're, we're glitches. Now. Love technical glitches. <laughs> Calm down. Calm down, McKay. Calm down. Well, if you've ever watched any movie that you watch where somebody says to the other, Calm down. I will guess that 98% of the time, the other person is, don't you tell me to calm down. So it's a conversation diverter, and it's not needed. People get excited. You can either let them converse, get excited, or you can say, what can I do to help? There are other words than saying, calm down, um, especially and ladies and gentlemen, yes, this is the customer service uh, program. And yes, I'm a customer experience expert. And yes, I've been doing this for a long time. But every technique I use, every technique that comes into Telephone Doctor is used in my house, on my husband, him to me, me to the kids, the kids to me. So that when you bring a technique into your business, and it's a good one, one of the guidelines of Telephone Doctor is bring it into your life, bring it into the home, bring it into the, into the area that, that matters to you. So you won't hear myself or my husband, Dick, saying calm down to each other. It's just something we decided not to say. We might say, my, you sound upset. <laughs> or you know, is, is that yelling necessary? But telling somebody to calm down is a conversation diverter, just like, hi, how are you? It just diverts the conversation into an area that you don't want to go to. So we put a red X on calm down. Again, I was watching Bill O'Reilly just the other night. And he said to his guest, calm down. And the guest said, don't you tell me to calm down, Bill O'Reilly. I'll, I'll do whatever I want. And the whole conversation went another way. And I, Dick and I looked at each other and said, well, there it is. So calm down is just something that we want to X out of our life. Oh, my, hey, don't turn it yet. Don't turn it yet. OK. If you're doing the next one right now, and you're going to see what it says. If you're doing the next one right now, that's an OMG. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. OK, I'm going to turn the page now. OK, we can go to, oh, gum. Well, you're not, 
You don't hear me speechless too often, but gum is just not for the office. I don't allow it at telephone, doctor. I don't care if you drink yourself to death. You're not chewing gum in my office. Um, I walked into a store the other day, and three salespersons were waiting for me, all with their little shirts on, name of the store. Two nice-looking young men and a girl right in the middle standing there ready to serve me. They all had a big smile. The young lady was chomping on her gum, mouth open, and you know how the tongue goes out when you turn like that. <laughs> in the store, I couldn't believe it. And they all said, can I help you, can I help you? And I wanted to say, two of you can help me, one of you can put your gum away. Uh, it's just, it is not good in an office. Don't be chewing it. I, yeah, I like to chew gum. I like to crack my gum. Where do I do it? In my car, alone. That's where gum belongs. It doesn't belong in any retail setting, in any office. I cannot understand how people can allow people to have gum in their mouth. Oh, but I have bad breath. Well, you know what? Get a mint. Or don't have it. Brush your teeth. But don't put gum in your mouth. In an office business setting, it is just, it is just so wrong, so bad. Um, when you're cracking it, if you're in front of me in the line of the grocery store and you're cracking it, you know what I say? I say, excuse me, I throw up from that noise. And then people say, oh, oh let me take it out. So, yeah, I don't, I don't enjoy gum, and I'm not going to be a victim to somebody chomping, cracking it when I'm sitting next to them. If I can move, I usually do rather than embarrass them. But uh, watch people today as they're chewing gum. Very few people chew gum well. I won't even say good because it's, it's, it's just not good. So, yeah, I'm gung-ho on that. It's not allowed in my house. The other day, uh, one of the kids brought their friends over, chomping away, and I just stuck my hand out. And he says, what do you want? I said, I want your gum. Can't chew gum in my house. Okay, number four. Oh, this is a good story. This is a nice story. Don't be too busy to be nice. And that's a true story, so let me share that one with you. Many years ago, we used a printer, a friend of ours, and a very good printer, and he just took such good care of us. And every time I called with the most minor printing issue, Nothing was a big problem. Everything would be okay. He kept me very happy. As you know, that's how you keep people. As a customer, you keep them happy. And uh, it just went along swimmingly. It was just beautiful. And one day, I picked up the phone, and I called him. He said, yeah, what do you want? I said, Joe, it's Nancy, a telephone doctor. He said, yeah, I know. What do you want? I said, wow. <laughs> this is uh, unusual. I said, I do have a problem with something, but if you're, if you're too busy, I said, you don't sound very nice today. And so help me cross over my heart. He said to me, Nancy, I'm too busy to be nice today. So you know what? We, we have another printer now. Yeah. So don't be too busy to be nice. I mean, everybody's busy. Thank God that we're busy. You know, people say to me, I hate when that phone rings. Well, you better hate cancer. You better hate Hitler. You better hate something else. Because when that phone rings, that's a success story, or can be. That's a buying sign when that phone rings. So don't be too busy to be nice. And that's a real quote. That is a real quote from somebody. Time to win a book. Time to win a book. I'm just going to put my name. Oh, how about Becker and Polakoff? I think they're in Florida. Ruth. Oh, Ruth. I, I do know Ruth. Look at that. Ruth, if you're on the line, you just want a book. you got to email me. I'm not going after you. Ruth Meyerhoff in Becker and Poland. So it's a law firm, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I hope you're having a good time. So that's two books we've got. Two books. we got Arkansas and we got Florida. Pay attention, boys and girls. You might be next. But don't be too busy to be nice. Uh, you just don't lose nice. And by the way, and here's just an extra bonus tip. It's not on the slide, so don't turn it. Telling a does not constitute the customer experience. That's not what it's about. Half the people that tell you to have a nice day say it to the floor. They don't look in your eyes. And again, it's something everybody says. Let's say something else to people when we conclude a conversation, when we see them in person. Find something better to say than have a nice day. It doesn't mean anything. OK, let's go to number five. Number five. Oh, it's a question. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how we're going to do this. What is the number one characteristic? Did we spell that right? Yeah, I guess so. Number one characteristic employers want in an employee. 
Boy, we can have people type that into the question bar, Nancy. Would that would that work? Yeah, let's see if I can see if some somebody who comes up first. Everybody feels like winning a book. What's the number one characteristic an employer wants in an employee? I don't see anybody. Okay, we've got a few coming in. We have uh, honesty, dedication, another for honesty, positive attitude, positivity, positivity, uh, great personality, coachable, great attitude. Shows up to work. <laughs> <laughs> Shows up to work. Well, i got to tell you, those are all good. They're all on the list. But in our reviews and our surveys, it's not the number one. And I'll tell you what the number one is, is accountability and responsibility. Stepping up to the plate. No excuses. Accountability. I don't want to point fingers, but what do you think is happening in government today? Everybody's pointing the finger at somebody else. Nobody's stepping up to the plate. Accountability is so needed in an office. I made a mistake. I did it wrong. I did it right. Step up to the plate. Accountability and responsibility is the number one characteristic employers want an employee. Now that being said, there are a slew of good characteristics we want in an employee. But if I can get you to be accountable for your job, if I can get you to be accountable for what you did, then I'm going to love you. I'm going to love you and I'm going to stand behind you because accountability says to me, it is honesty. It is trust. It is all those things together. It's attitude. And maybe that's what everybody means when, they, when we made the surveys, is that accountability and responsibility is so critical. If you've got somebody in your office that keeps making excuses, they are not accountable. They, are, they don't take responsibility. And I've got to tell you personally, as, as it just Every one of our techniques transfers over to, to every touch point of communication. So let's go on to number six. What can we do with number six? Number six, oh, chatty Kathy dolls. Don't we love those? These are people who, when they get on the phone, or in person, doesn't matter, they want to tell you about their grandmother's experience with your company. They want to share every item with you about the situation. Okay, maybe they're a little older, but sometimes there's, there's the young group, too, that needs to tell you too much. And we call them Chatty Cathy Dolls. Now, there's nothing wrong with them, but one of our programs has a back-on-track technique, and I'll share it with you. It's in our program, Proactive Customer Service. So somebody's going on and on, and don't let them go too long, Thir maybe 15, 20 seconds, and you know where that's going. It's going right up the track with the train. You can say, Mrs. Jones, I would love to hear about your grandmother's apple cart. I mean, that sounds so interesting. However, I know you called with something I can help you about. Now, how can I help you? And you get them back on track. I've done it enough times. I know it works. So that when somebody goes off on the wrong track, let them talk 30 seconds and say, Mr. Jones, if you don't have their name, well, we'll, we'll tell you how to get their name later on. It's not one of these techniques because I've done that before. But Mr. Jones, I would love to hear more about how your grandfather started his farm. That sounds so interesting. I'm, I'm interested in that. However, I know you called with a problem, and I would love to be able to help you. Now, how can I help you? Oh, yeah, well, I've got this. And then you get them back on track. You see, the old saying of the customer is always right, you and I know that's not true. You and I know that's not true. You and I know that the saying should be the customer always thinks they're right, and that's the perception that we need to deal with. So if they're going to think that telling you a story about their grandma, their grandfather, whatever happened, um, is the right thing to do, you don't need to listen to that. The customer isn't right. You've got a job to do. And whenever I monitor calls, I, when I go to a company and I monitor calls, and I hear, look, and one of the reps is, is just listening there and they're rolling their eyes, I'm thinking, you don't need to do that. You can take control of the conversation. So it is up to you if you're dealing with a customer face-to-face on the phone, either way, any, any way of the six touch points that you're dealing with, to take control of the conversation. Don't let them be chatty Kathy dolls. They're cute. They're nice. They're sweet. But if you want to move the conversation along, say, excuse me, I would love to hear what you're talking about. However, I know you called with a situation, and I'm, I'm here to help you. That's why I woke up today. I was hoping you'd call. OK. Uh, one of the comments that we get, number seven, number seven, number seven, Five frustrating voicemail phrases. Well, why did you put this one in, Nancy? I put this one in because when I do programs and I speak at association and franchise meetings, um, people always ask me, what should my voicemail say? 
So we decided to put together an article on the five frustrating voicemail phrases. You ready? These are the five phrases that I will guarantee are on your cell phone as I speak. I know she had dinner with me. And then I say, let me hear your voicemail. Okay. The first phrase that is frustrating is, hi, this is Bob, and I'm not here right now. Well, that's a hot lot of news. If your voicemail answered, of course you're not there right now. So that's an unnecessary step, saying I'm not here right now. I'm not able to answer my phone. Unnecessary. Number two frustrating voicemail phrases, I'm sorry I missed your call. Well, you know what? So am I. It's useless. We know as a customer that if I miss or a friend, if, if you miss my call, you, I know you're sorry. Useless, informa useless information. Useless information. Number three, your call is very important to me. Oh, yeah? Then why aren't you there? Useless information. Useless information. You don't need that on a voicemail and answering machine. We know the call's important. Use that time, that very precious time, to say something wonderful instead of your call is very important to me. You know where these came from? These came from the people who make the machine, who made the cell phones, and they said, let's put together some phrases that people can say. They weren't experts on customer service. They weren't experts in anything but making the phone system, and then they tried to pull out something that sounded good, and they don't. Number four, I'll return your call as soon as possible. Well, you know what? Your as soon as possible is different from my as soon as possible is different from... You will never exceed anybody's expectations with as soon as possible. It is a useless phrase. When somebody says to me, I'll get it to you as soon as possible, I always say, make me a time, make me a day. As soon as possible just isn't, it's nothing. It, 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 my as soon as possible might, might, might be Christmas. So it's useless. You don't need it. You can do without it. And the last one really isn't a phrase, but it's, it's something that bothers people. And that's where we don't give an escape clause. In other words, if you do need information, here's my, here's my home phone, here's my cell phone, uh, here's, here's, uh, here's Susie Smith's phone, here's my, my secretary's extension, here's my email. You don't need all those. Obviously, pick one. But people need to know, if you're not there, who can I go to? And if, you know, my cell phone says, you know, if I'm not here, call the 800 number and somebody there will be able to, able to help you. Uh, so you've got, you've got the, I'm not here right now, useless, sorry, I missed your call, useless, call is very important to me. Man, does that frustrate people. Call you back as soon as possible. And hey, by the way, to you sitting there listening to this webinar, if you've got, and I will return your call as soon as possible, and you don't, what does that make you? Don't start. I just don't understand people who don't return a phone call or have it returned in their behalf. I don't get it. I don't get it. Why? If you're not going to return the phone call, possible. My statement says, phone says, and I will return your call, period. I don't even say when, but I do return the calls. But not return a phone call, I don't, un and I don't understand. The other one I don't understand, I don't understand not returning an email. I just don't understand. I don't understand it. So somebody can tell that to me. Don't want to talk to me? Tell me. Okay. Before we turn the page, remember I started out with calm down, and what did we call that? We called that a conversation diverter, didn't we? Okay, let's go to number eight, because we have one of the biggest conversation diverters. Aha. Uh -huh. Can I be honest with you? No, lie to me. I want you to lie to me. Don't be honest with me. Ladies, you're listening. When we go try an address at Dillard's or one of the stores, the salesperson says, you want me to be honest with you? No, lie to us, honey. So it's just, it's a useless statement, can I be honest with you? Let me tell you the truth. Useless statement. So find something that says, I'm going to tell you how I feel, or something to that point, or just state the obvious, which is what you're going to say. You don't need that kind of buffer, can I be honest with you? It doesn't do anything, because the other person's thinking, honest to gosh, no, lie to me. This is, this is what I want you to do today. So conversation diverter, it doesn't do anything. I don't know why that word honest doesn't look right, but it's right, isn't it? Sometimes you ever look at a word and it just doesn't look right? Okay. Let's go to number nine. We're moving in on the half hour mark. And I can stay a little longer if the people want to stay a little longer. Uh, the six touch points of communication. Yes, I'm the telephone doctor, but we have morphed into every one of the six touch points of communication. And I'll give them to you. I made them rhyme, so pay attention. Every way we touch a customer by email, voicemail, snail mail, phone, fax. Face-to-face, -face. all six of those, I'll repeat them, email, voicemail, snail mail, 
phone, fax, face to face. What did I leave out? Oh, why did I leave that out? Texting. We left texting off the six touch points of communication because it's not in the mainstream yet. And I put that yet in quotes because someday it may be. But right now, if you want to give a proposal to somebody or give a, a pricing issue to somebody or talk about your benefits and your, and your features and your benefits, I doubt they're texting it. Texting is where you want to go to lunch? Yes. Where? Okay, O'Brien. That's done. Fine. And, but. and while we're on the six touch points, let's talk about our kids today. Let's talk about the teenagers because there isn't a program that I do at any meeting where somebody doesn't ask me, Nancy, what are we going to do with these kids today? They're on those phones. They're texting. They don't know how to talk. They don't know how to write. They don't know how to spell. I wish I had an answer. I find it frightening. I find it frightening that they don't know the difference between your and your, there and there. There was a Wall Street Journal story. A reporter wrote a story about his son, his teenage son. He asked him to write a to hand write a thank you note. You ready? So he wrote a thank you note on a piece of paper. He put it in the envelope. He did not know where the stamp went. The father who wrote the article said, I couldn't believe it. He didn't know where the, the address went. He didn't know where the stamp went. He had never written a thank you note. That's what's growing up today. That's what's going to be out there. I have no idea. So what little we can do, and I will tell you that when I get a group of youngsters in a, in a class or, or a program, they're sponges for the information, so they want it. They're just not getting it. You know, they're not, they're not being, it's being, if it's being taught in school today, they're not listening. They're not listening. Okay, number 10, number 10. Ah, be friendly before you know who it is. So what does that mean? That means when you pick up the phone, it is too late to smile after you've picked up the receiver. You got to smile before you pick up the receiver. You got to be friendly before you know who it is. It is too late. Dick and I were sitting in a doctor's office a while back, and that's where this tip came from. And she kept going, Matthew Smith and Jones, thank you. Matthew Smith and Jones, thank you. Matthew Smith and Jones, thank you. Matthew Smith and Jones, oh, hi, Bobby. Yeah. Yeah, you, we can be there tonight. Yeah, you bet. So she was friendly afterwards, but wouldn't it have been nice for her to be friendly before she knew who it was to, to those three callers ahead of her. So that's where the tip came in. Every single tip, idea, skill, and technique that is in a Telephone Doctor video program has happened to me personally, I witnessed, or I verified. Nothing is made up which is why we get a lot of the comments, man, these videos seem so real. They see some real, because they are real. They happen. I don't change a word. Sometimes when I'm going through a store and, or something happens, I'll write that down so it doesn't get changed. So, so I don't put my feelings down. All right, number 11, 11, emotional leakage. That's a word my husband made up, emotional leakage. That's getting mad at Peter and taking it out on Paul. It's not fun. It's not right. It's it's not fair to take a negative thought out on somebody who's not involved. How rude can we get? Emotional leakage. So we come in in the morning. There was no hot water at work. There's no milk for the cereal. There's no gas in the car. And we come into work and we're barking at everybody at work. We're leaking, guys. We're emotionally leaking. It wasn't anybody's fault in the office that the shower wasn't warm, that we didn't have milk, that we, that we, we, did, we were out of gas. It's nobody's fault in the office. It certainly isn't the fault of the customer. But that's what happens. We emotionally leak. When negative things happen to us, we often emotionally leak a negative thought. So what's the cure to emotional leakage? Well, I thought you'd never ask. It is in, obviously, one of our programs, of course. And that is you let that phone ring one more time. You take a deep breath. Yeah, I know it's silly, but it works. You put that phony smile on your face. That's right. You're all doing it now. Let me see them teeth. You put that phony smile on your face, and then you pick up the phone. There is no value to letting people hear you in a negative mode. I mean, there's, you, you know that, and yet it happens. Uh, how many times when we go through the checkout counter and I'll say to somebody, you look good today. How's it going? Everything okay? I can't wait till I get out of here. Do I need to hear that? She's leaking on me. No, you're not able to go up to somebody and say, excuse me, sir, you're leaking on me. But you can recognize that when people are leaking on you, it's something else that happened that you're getting well, responsible for. You've been given the responsibility to carry half her baggage. Not fair, not fun, not right. Emotional leakage. All right, number 12. And we just made it by 30 minutes. Look at that. Leave a great, 
leave a last great or leave a great last first I don't know leave a great last great impression so how does one do that well most conversations end with mm-hmm bye-bye I don't know how great that impression is we like to say it was wonderful talking with you I hope to talk with you soon thank you we like to say something that makes a last great impression on a customer uh, we don't say have a nice day around here we'll say it was good talking with you thanks for calling you sounded great please call again I look forward to our I mean again 22 different ways to leave a last great impression somebody leaves your office it shouldn't be just have a nice day it should be thank you for coming in we appreciate your business I mean there's just so many ways to say bye-bye without saying bye-bye so we gave you 12 new golden nuggets this is always a pleasure for me. I want to take some questions, McKay, if we can. But let me go over the uh, the ways to, to reach both you and me. Uh, telephone doctors, because right here in St. Louis, Missouri, I'm Nancy at Telephone Doctor. You can see nancyfriedman.com, or you can go to telephonedoctor.com, either one. Facebook, you get a customer service tip of the day. Twitter, you get a customer service tip of the day. LinkedIn, you get a customer service tip of the day. So you can reach me anyway. Uh, the only question I don't want to hear is how much do you weigh? So I'll take a few questions if anybody's there. We got uh, Oklahoma and, and uh, Florida getting a couple books. Let me let me see what uh, what else we got. Um, we got we got oh we got Arizona here. We got so many nice people here. Makeda, are there any questions there? Anybody want to ask anything? If, if that's okay, Nancy, we've got a couple of really good questions. Um, yeah, let's hear them. So uh, first, let me look through the list here. Okay, here, here's, a, here's a good one. Um, so you talked about specific things not to do on voicemail messages. Give us, if you can, maybe an example of how one should structure their voicemail message. What should you say on that? What, is, what are the important elements to include? Well, important element on a voicemail message, number one is, silly as it sounds, is to have a great big smile on your face because that's what's going to make people leave a message, whether it's on your answering machine at your work whether it's on your cell phone at, at, in, in your pocket or whether it's your phone at home. So you want to say, hi, thanks for calling Nancy, all right, and depending whether it's your cell phone. You want to let people know where you are, not where you're not. Saying I'm not here right now is useless. So depending on how you feel and where you are on your cell phone, you might want to say, I am traveling today. Return phone calls may be sketchy, but they will be returned. If you need my office, you can reach me at 800-882-9911. So you want to tell people where you are, what's going on, not what's not going on, not where you're not going there, if you know what I'm saying. Your voicemail message does not need to be long. It does not need to be the sequel to Gone with the Wind. We've all heard those. It just needs to be, hi, this is Nancy Friedman. I am traveling this week, but I return all calls. Go ahead and leave your name and number, and I will return the call. Well, that's it. Have a great day. Uh, it, that says what do you want. And, you know, or I think I, I do add on my cell phone if you need immediate assistance, call Valerie at 800-882-9911. I repeat my phone numbers twice and slowly, which is a free telephone doctor tip. Anytime I leave a message on anybody's cell phone, on anybody's answering machine, leave your phone number twice and slowly. How many of you have ever had, a, had somebody leave a, a message on, on your cell phone? Hi, this is Bob Smith. Yeah, give me a call. I have something very important to ask you. I'm at 7218. Thank you. Bye-bye. So they zip through their phone number. Why? Because they know their phone number, but you don't. All right. So I hope that helps. What else we got? That's great. Um, and then one more question. This comes up, it seems like, in every webinar we've done, Nancy, is, how do you deal with a, a customer that calls and is, is really upset about something? Um, and that's, obviously, a you guys, that's a that's whole half hour webinar. That's a whole webinar. You've got to do whole hour webinar. <laughs> um, whole. Getting, ha Handling irate callers and upset customers is not fun. It's not done in a nugget. Um, and I'm not trying to get out of anything. You know, we have a wonderful program called How to Handle the Irate Caller. Uh, but the bottom line is, it, you know, Without training the people who handle customers, and I don't care if that's in person or on the phone or emails, and by the way, we're, we're doing a new uh, video on, on email etiquette shortly, a new, uh, yeah, it, because people sometimes don't know how to write emails. They put such negative thoughts into them. Dear Mrs. Jones, we cannot help you. Thank you. Have a nice day. It's useless. I mean, I, you should see some of the emails I get from companies. So that's going to that's be a good seller. But... Handling people who are frustrated and everything is an art, not a science. 
and it, it needs a lot of, it needs somebody who's been trained to handle that you don't put a new person or if you do put a new person on and somebody gets upset with them the new person needs to be trained to say I can help you this is my third day but I can help you let me get my supervisor thank you for being so patient uh, you, what happens is sometimes we get new people who think they know how to handle an upset customer and they will they'll screw it up every time every single time unless you got a natural so irate callers are not done in a nugget it's not done in 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 a, in a quick moment's notice it's done with training it's done with a smile it's done with sincerity it's done with interest it's done with responsibility accountability honesty dependability all those things that everybody started with at first that's great Nancy, thank you so much for taking the time today. We really appreciate it. it I had a ball. I had a ball. I got a list of all the people here. Let me see if I can find out one more. We have one somebody here. I think if Dish TV is there, I did a wonderful program with Dish TV. It was terrific. Thank you, thank you. If you're sitting in the audience there, a lot of Canadians. Uh, oh my gosh, look at all the good. There's such good. Oh, it's Frank Russell, you there, baby? Frank Russell from Dow Chemical. He's a wonderful guy. The Safeway Auto. To oh my gosh, we got a lot of people here. I wish I could read all the people that are sitting here. Oh, here's somebody cute. I met him at a travel conference, and you have their name of the company is WMPH. Now, what the heck does that mean? It means we make people happy. Isn't that cute? I think that's great. Okay. Bottom line. Thank you, everybody. I'm available to talk today, this week, and then I'm out of town. But love hearing from you. Email Nancy at telephonedoctor.com. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, Nancy, okay. thank you. No, you're, you're fine. Well. Nancy, thank, <laughs> thank you so much. We appreciate it. Awesome as usual. And, and uh, everybody, thank you so much for attending today. We really appreciate it. And have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you. Bye-bye.